Ali, just you to give your information. Okay, so uh, yes, thank you very much for joining in, and uh, I hope you've seen that uh, I've just you know finalized the grades for assignment one, two, and midterm. I hope you have seen that number one, number two is that uh, uh, like, you know, we are going to have our quiz two uh, next week. It's going to be next week. So every section will have this quiz on their own uh, like class timing. So your section, your quiz will also be on your class timing. Of course, we won't have uh, like live class next week, but you are going to have your quiz available from one to five and you have to just attempt in between that window. So please keep that in mind. The quiz two is coming up next week. And I hope you guys have seen assignment three is now open and uh, you can just solve that one. So we might have one more assignment after that, that when it closes, you'll get one more and that would be the final one. So. Um, so just keep an eye on, on the submissions and everything. And. Uh, yeah, so let's just start our today's topic. So today we are going to start something called scripts in JavaScript, which uh, not JavaScript, sorry, <laughs> in databases. So it's actually something that you would see that, you know, uh, you would you would find out that this is actually. So scripts, let's start about the scripts. So um, databases in general, they have these uh, three op types of objects. One of them is a script or the scripts that we will talk about today. And again, those who have joined late, can you just send a message, chat message of good afternoon or hello or something? I don't see a message after Gurupreet's message. I don't know if I'm missing the messages or someone is not sending that. Okay, so script. Okay, Shubham, good afternoon. And the second thing that we have is user defined functions and then stored procedures. So we'll just look in, into a into few of them that how we basically try to just you have that uh, script. Actually, let's talking about let's start talking about the script first of all. So, we have certain batch commands. You remember uh, last uh, last last week's lecture? If you have looked at that one, sorry. Let's start with the script. A script is a file stored on disk containing one or more SQL statements. So, how many of you had a chance to look at the last week's lecture transactions? So, if you have seen transactions, you would have seen that we have. Like we run some transactions, we try to stop some transactions, isolate one transaction from the other, and things like that. So here we are, we are talking about is a script. So it's a file stored on disk containing one or more SQL statements. So we'll write certain SQL statements and we'll call them as a script, right? And, and literally it means a script, you know, to, to, to make something happen, to do something. So scripts do not uh, script do not accept parameters. So they do not accept parameters like functions do, like you know procedures might do, but the scripts do not uh, uh, accept any parameters. The groups of the statements comprising the script can be further subdivided, subdivided into batches. And again, you know the transactions that we talked about, you know in batches. If you if you remember last week, I've talked about that batches and transactions. So comprising the script that can be further divided into batches. So we can further divide that into the into the batches to indicate the end of the batch you use go so go shows the end of a particular batch that this batch is over and now whatever will be followed will be the next batch of statements that's that's really about the about the script so that is that is what the script is all about now what are the batches so batch commands that require batch ending we might require a batch ending if we are creating a schema. The, the structure or the or the schema is basically the plan how the table would be storing the data into it. Trigger. And what is the trigger? Trigger is basically, you know, something, some happening. If you if you see last week's lecture, I've talked about triggers over there. And again, um, just keep in mind for exam purposes, and this is I'm not talking to section nine only, like I'm, I'm talking to the, all three sections that um, in, in last week's lecture, uh, there is some missing part, like, you know, there's some audio being missing from there. And that is the point that I would like to just, you know, 
point, I, I would like you to just know that what is that part where the audio is missing. And I don't want to tell you that whether it was intentional or unintentional, but there was some part of the lecture which is missing audio. And there, there we have talked about the triggers. So I'll, I'll be expecting you guys to just have a look at that one from the last week's lecture. Anyhow, so create procedure. It might require a batch command that requires an ending again by using the go command. Create function and create database. So they all are generally considered as the the commands, the batch commands that will require a go towards the end to show that the statement is over. And some of the statement that do not require batch ending is create table, create view, any DML command performing insert, update, delete, and, and, and select. They do not require a batch ending as we require in the function. So we'll see that. I'll do that. Create database DB set. So that is again, as we say, that create database is a batch command and it will require a go. So it means that it shows that now this command is over and now just use DB test and create a table T1, create a table T2. So that might be, you know, the, if you see that this is a, this might be a batch commands example. So statements, what are the statements? If you talk about this is batch command example, so statements, what are statements? One can be the use statement, changes the DB context. So remember DB context or the DB is the one that we want to use for a particular application. So if we use the use keyword, like the use command or use a statement, so to speak, changes it changes the DB context. So you remember that when we were working in our uh, Visual Studio, uh, no, not Visual Studio, <laughs> I continuously have a JavaScript in mind today. We have, when we were working on the SQL Server Studio Management Studio SSMS, we saw that we when we use the use command, we change the database, the database context. And now if I write print or like again, if I write create, if I write select, if I write you know delete or anything, I am talking about that particular database that we have used. So use can be a very potential statement that can be used for changing the database. Print, and we have seen prints here and there, prints a message in the batch output channel. So when the batch is there, we want to output a, a message over there, we would use that one. Declare, again, we have talked about declare, you have used that declare before. Declares a local variable. Set, sets the value of the local variable. So declare, declares, set, sets up the value, exec, executes a stored procedure. We might, we might not have used the exec in the in the direct sense, but there is an exec as well, execute. Now, before going to use statement, I would like to just add something over here. So in this uh, in this chapter, whatever we will learn, it, we, it will make us able to code scripts with functionality that is quite similar in essence to the procedural programming languages like C Sharp, like Visual Basic, like Java, or JavaScript, so for that matter. So we want to write some of the scripts that Java, that database commands or database can run. And that is really a beautiful thing because you know we want to make databases much more, uh, much more you know adaptable, much more usable by the other programs, by the by the developers, so to speak. So we want that these commands that we write, like you know the SQL command, the DML command, the data manipulation language. Or you know that data definition languages that we that we use, it's actually it has to have a format that it starts matching the procedural languages that we have, the procedural programming languages that we have. Otherwise, you know, SQL is not a procedural programming language in its in its original form. I hope you guys are getting that what I'm trying to say. So actually what, what happens is that, you know, if you are, if you want to, you know, in general term, one statement that has not been mentioned over here, but it might be a potential, you know, exam question somewhere that why do we want to introduce the scripts? Because we want to convert this SQL, which looks like a sort of a, sort of a, you know, interpretation based language or line by line compilation language it's actually we want to convert it into the procedural programming language. So a script is that effort that will change the first effort that will change the the language and you know uh, this uh, uh, 
again, statements based language into what? Into a procedural programming language. And I've given you an example. It can be it if we want to make it like C sharp, we want to make it like Visual Basic, we want to make it like Java or JavaScript, whatever. So that's that's basically we have the we have want to. So yes, as you guys have like most of the experience in most of these programming languages, so you might not have any problems understanding uh, that one, like you know, in that part. But transit SQL or the SQL that we are talking about, you know, it's it's because transit SQL is designed specifically to work with SQL Server databases rather than as a general purpose programming. Language. For so it's for its intended use. Trans transit SQL programming is powerful and flexible, and we have to actually understand the relationship or the power of the programming power of transit SQL, you know, and 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 it's it's basically limited to the other language. So that's why we want to do what we want to convert our uh, our our procedural uh, like you know our transit SQL language, which is SQL structured query language, into into what into a procedural programming language, and that is what script is gonna give us results of. Like you know, we'll just try to talk about uh, transit SQL, and you know, we'll we'll just you know work with the with the scripts, right? So up till now we have just you know up till now what we have we have done, we have just done you know the SQL statements. We used to write SQL statements. We have written use like separately. We have used we have at times we have used print as well. We have used declare as well. We have sweat as well, exec as well. But again, we have not you know used in 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 as a one script, as a as a one batch. For example, you know we saw the transactions like last time. You know we to end a batch we will be using go over here. So we want to do what script can include any number of statements and those uh you know the, any number of uh, statements and those statements can be divided into one or more batches so we will combine multiple batches together and we'll try to create one script and that is that is that is something that we would like to uh like to just you know do over there so now let's come back and come to the user statement use statement what does what use statement changes the database in which the statements will be executed it is especially important when the batch is executed a script outside of the interactive query window. That's very interesting. Especially important when the batch is executed as a script outside of the interactive query window. You know, in an interactive query window, might be the database, might be any database be, that has been selected. But if we use, if we if we want to just use that database in general, in general, what we'll do is that we'll write a script and use the statement will make it happen that at the runtime it will change the database and at it will apply only those conditions or those practice uh, like you know those, those statements to the database that has been contextually selected by using using that that use statement right so it's especially important when the batch is executed as script outside of the interactive query window so might be right now the interactive query window will be representing the master database but if we if we use use statement you know that it would change the context and it will implement those statements in in that database only in the offline batch execution of the default database is always or almost masters. You know, you know, it's always master to start with. So users should not create objects in this database. Hence, the actual target database must be explicitly specified. Does that make sense? So views statement is basically used for that particular purpose. So example, use SIS. You know, we have talked about that. Declare total paid money, set at total paid, select some amount from payment, print at total paid. So, you know, it's actually making a script. It's just right. Use use a statement, for example. So this use statement will change the the database context, and now this all will be done for the SIS statement. Why not? Let's start our SSMS. I'll start my SSMS here, and side by side run some commands because I will be showing you some of the some of the examples of these commands. So why not? Let's run these commands as well. Alongside us, our our lecture, right? So I'm expecting that you also have your uh, SQL Server Management Studio open. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
So our database is ready. If I just start a new query, All right. Let's see uh, when it comes up because my system is aging fast like myself. I got this taking so long. Uh, may I know how many of you were able to? Of course, you know, you should be. My system is very slow. You should be able to now run your SSMS. Is it working? Is it working on your side? Anyone? Everyone? Okay, Gurpit says yes. Okay, Gurpit, look, look at that. My system is taking ages to get logged, you know, login in, even though it's not nothing. It's showing connected. It means that database is connected to a SQL server, but still, it's taking so long for just opening up a new query. Why in the world? Uh, good morning. You have your raised hand. Looks like it's by mistake. I think yeah. Okay, it does not look normal. I'll have to change that one. Oh, it's there. So you see that uh, again. So that that really shows us that if I just want to run these commands, for example, if I copy them here, come here and I copy them. So look at that. Of course, we know that as a batch or as a stage, as a script, if I run this command, let's execute that. And if I click on this one, you will see, of course, right now that context, database context, that is uh, good print. You want to say something? No, no means again. I, I understand your hand was raised by mistake, right? Or you have a question. If you have a question, you can just go ahead. So this master database is selected. And if I come over here and if I click on this one again without selecting any statement, what it'll do, it says that it completion time is there. And you know, it's it is printing out the total paid amount. And how does it do that? It, it declares a total paid with as money as a data type of money. Set total paid is equal to set some amount from payment. So from SI SIS table, it goes to the it goes to the like you know the payment table, and it takes out the sum of amount, all the sum of amount, and it practically just comes out here and prints that one. So that's that 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 really it's uh, is basically you know doing that one. If I just you know change this sum to AVG like average, if I just run this command, look at that. It should come up with, let's see if it calculates the average of that amount. Oh, the query is running. Let's see, it will come up. Anyhow, so that's that's typically what that is typically, you know, running a uh, running a script or running a script. Let's see. But I don't know why it is just taking so long. Let's stop that. It's not stopping you <laughs> anyhow. So yes, so that's that's basically typically what our script is being running of use statement. So use change the database. And again, the variables we have talked about these variables a lot. And you want to just see that over here. The variables which are also called scalar variables can hold a single value. Variables can be used in the select statement as holders of the result or as the holders of the condition values. So variables can hold each one, any one of them. Variables cannot substitute object names, table, view, procedure names. So again, of course, we should never. This is, you know, as a programming language student or programming student, software development student, you know that most of the languages, they have a global, like they have lots of global standards uh, and global, you know, settings, global rules. And one of the global rule is that variables, uh, variables should never be named as the something from the language by itself. For example, a language, 
has reserved words, has keywords. So you can never you can never use those uh, like you know those variables names with with typically you know you cannot use them as a variable name. So you know you would have heard in C language you cannot define a variable called main because main is a main function over there. You cannot you cannot use int as a variable name because you know the int is a reserved word. So the reserved word, the keywords, they cannot be replaced with the over, over variable names, and that is quite important. Scalar variables are defined with a data type and are designated to hold a singular singular scalar value. Name of the variable always start with an at the rate. We have seen that use long descriptive names. It has to be a descriptive name so that we recognize what what uh, area you are talking about. Is it is it done? Query cancelled. Yes, and now it should be. It should run and produce the result. I don't know how much time it will take. Anyhow, so yeah, so this is this is basically name of the variable. Always start with at the rate and use long descriptive name. Like again, your name should be descriptive. It can be long. Why? Because you know you never want to confuse yourself. And at times, you know the SQL Server Management Studio compiler as well. That what variable or what a specific area you are talking about. Even though you cannot come. You cannot confuse the machine, but sometimes the machines get confused when the name of a variable are not very descriptive. The scope of the variable is the batch in which it is defined. The variable cannot be referred outside of that batch. This is important. Life of variable, the scope of variable is the batch in which it is defined. So only in that batch, that variable will be visible or available. After that batch, we cannot use that variable. That's, a, that's an important uh, observation over here. OK, you select or select uh, you set or select to assign value to variable. We can use both of them. Variables can be used in expressions, and that is quite obvious. We can want to use in the expressions. Now table variables. This is interesting. Table variables are declared in the same manner as local variables using table data type. We define them as a table variable. So declare table variable table F1 int, for example, insert into table variable values one. Select a static from a table variable. So it's a it's the use of a table variable. Now, what are table variables? Table variables can be filled as a regular table. They can be filled as a regular table. You know, the same select operation can be performed, and we can just use that. Uh, we can use that the same select operation. Select ID from payment, insert at table variable, and we have got this. You know, this this uh, insert at table variable. We are inserting that one. Select ID from payment. And select static from table variables. So again, we can we can just select those things over here. So why not? Let's come back over here and let's let's try these table variables over there, right? So why not? Let's copy this. Look at the declare table variable f1 int and again let's me just oh sorry so we are declaring over here and table is filled as a regular table so insert add table variable select id from payment select status from the table variable so we'll we'll just implement both of them let's see if it stops i don't know Today it's just working very slow. Let's see when it is it allows me. Oh, it's it's now done. Good. I'll come back over here. Just close that. OK, now I'll run this one. It says F1 has a value of one. You know, it has just created a integer value over here. And now let's come back here. And let's do the insertion inside that. Right, so insert into table variable. And select from table variable. Uh, Step nine must declare the table. Okay, must declare the table variable. So again, I'll have to, to put that in a in a batch here. 
Yeah, so you see that I'm just not on this one. Okay. So let's let's let it run. So temporary table. Temporary tables can be created within a script. There are two types of tables: local and global. Of course, denoted by hash sign. Global denoted by hash hash sign or double hash sign. The scope of local temporary variables database session. They are very useful in complex scripts. Local temporary variables and global temporary variables are visible to all sessions. Every session will see that. Temporary table names is limited to one sixteen characters. So temporary table name can be over there. Temporary table example, select top one student number into his hash student. Like again, local variable from payment, select the status from the student. So we are just creating a table over here. Now I'll come back to this example, but I want to show one more example of your, of that uh, typical, uh, let me just show that. Okay, it says that you need to declare that one. So now, now if I come here and run that, yes, so you see that? It is just showing me that you know it's it's basically you know taking from the payment the ID from the payment and just storing that ID over here with with every table variable right. So now other than that, I would like to show you another another you know uh, uh, you know script of two batches. I'll just show you script of two batches. Another example before we jump into a script with two batches. Let's create a script with the two batches right. So again, I'll, I'll just show you that how to use that use in fact as well. So I'll say here, I say create database. And let's say with the with today's date, we create a database. July, it's 18, right? July 18. Now I would write go. And now I would say use July 18. Right? Now please do it, do this with me. Create, we are creating table. Table and for example, say members, something like that. So member ID, integer, not null, identity. You remember all these things, primary key. Last name, variable character, 75 foot length. And it should be not null again. You know, I'm just I'm just giving you a, a little bit more practice of the tables that we create. First name, bar char. I just want 50 letters for the first name. It should be not null again. And then middle name. Again, variable characters, and it can be 50. And it can be null, right? Because it's it's just middle name. So let's put it over here. This is the first table that I want to create. Right. Right, and then I will create another table. So create table. For example, committees. Something like that committees. And what I want to say committee. ID. Integer. Not null. Identity again, automatically it should realize primary key. And then committee name, variable character, let's say 50, not null. This is another table. Now I, I would like to create another table, create Create table committee assignments. Member ID. Integer. Sorry, integer. Not null. And now here, remember references. Members. Member ID. So it will be referencing from our, like again, it will be treated as what? The the foreign key over here, right? So it should be referencing from there and committee ID. 
int not null and again that also references references committee committee id so i have created this uh, these you know sort of batches or what you call it like you know i have created three tables over here and i would like to uh, why it is just giving an error or oh, integer right so let's now now let's run these commands this is script by the way if i just come here and run that one let's see i'll wait for this to happen So can you tell me, anyone, how many batches are there in this? In this again, I've just mentioned that two batches, but how do we recognize which one? Which one is one batch and which one is the other? Anyone? How would we recognize? So again, it says that two batches. Of course, it says two batches. So what actually you know represents that? You know which one is one batch and which one is the second batch? Anyone? A uh, semicolon. Okay, no, not Shubham. Thank you very much for your answer. But it might not be the semicolon that represents two batches. Anyone else? Sagar. Sagar is there. Dave is there. I would like everyone to just you know jump in and, and let me know. Anila is there. Janal is there. Piyush is there. Madesh is there. I need your answers, please. I'm still waiting for the answer. Cheryl is there. Tino is there seeking again. There are lots of people here. My query is not running. And then in the meantime, I'm just waiting for your answers as well. How do we know that which one is the is one batch and which one is the second batch? Anyone? Where is member and committee stable? Um, okay. Sagar, that's that's a good try. Anyone else? Good. Anyone else? That's what like you know you can you can just you know guess that one. It may be. Let's see anyone come anyone else come up in the meantime my query. Because I know that query might not be producing the result, but I'll I'll talk about that one. But let's see what will happen. By identifier. Okay. Still, Sagar, wonderful. Thank you. I, I would like others to just come in, maybe. Anila, Piyush, Madesh. Can you can you guys just you know guess maybe? So that's a good try, a good try, Sagar. And it's a very nice try. But let's see if someone can someone else can come up and and We're still waiting for our people to just come in.
Look at that, what, uh, what has come up. <laughs> You see that it says that it does not exist. You know why, why it is happening? Yeah, 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 sure, sure. Sagar, why not? Uh, Shubham, as I have already, I have already, dis, uh, you know, uh, published the assignment. You can find out in the assignments folder. I don't know why you're asking this question. I, you, you must have seen that by now. Yes. Anyone else? So now look at that. How do we know? So Sagar, look at that. It's actually this go tells me that this batch is over. This first batch is over. Now, interestingly, if I go to my databases, if I come to my databases, look at that. If I'm coming to my databases and look at uh, what, what is happening over here. It is also taking ages to come up. <laughs> Look at the message what it says. It says that uh, insufficient, there is insufficient memory available in the buffer pool. First of all, the memory is memory leakage is happening somehow. And then it says level 16 state one line 22. In line 19, it says that uh, insufficient memory and line Twenty-two. It says that, uh, like you know, database July eighteen does not exist. It does not exist even before we are running that statement. So again, it's just like the synchronicity, asynchronicity problem over here. That you know, the database might not be even available before we have. Let's see that if I refresh that and if I, I can show you the database. And Sagar, do you did you check your uh, did, did did your query go, went through or without the error? It shows it shows the same error as mine. Sagar, I'm asking because you are just the only one replying. Shubham was replying, but Shubham has had to leave. Same error. Okay, wonderful. And did you did you check your databases if that database is there or not? Like you know the database that you're talking about. Okay, so you cannot see the database, right? That's what you're saying. Okay, let's see. Let's see why it is just, you know, it's creating a lot of problem for me. <laughs> yeah, sure, sure, sure. It looks like I'll have to do that again <laughs> also. I'll also wait for, for that restarting thing. Okay, so it's not doing anything. Let me just try that. Try that to stopping that one.
Okay, I cannot do anything. Let me just uh, see what's wrong here. This one is all frozen, you know. This window is all frozen for me. It's not working at all. <laughs> I might have to stop that one. Oh, asking for updates, you know, it might be there might be some updates over there. You can you can do that update, Sagar, no problem. Let me see if that this window works <laughs> because that is the, the other one is stuck and it's not uh, it's not even allowing me to restart that one. That is at least closed. I'll just have to try that closing that one. So my machine is stuck, all is stuck. Let me just see that. I'll have to do the control or delete. Just give me a second. It should be closed now because I have just to get in control or delete. Let's see if I will able to just, you know, recover this one. There's something seriously wrong with my SSMS. Let me just, you know, recover this one. I'm trying to recover it. Hopefully it will be recovered. Okay, looks like now it is gone and I'll just start it one more time and see if it recovers from that. Sandra, did you get the updates there? You got you were looking for like you know your system was asking for some updates. Did you do the updates?
Okay, wonderful, wonderful, good. Let's see if it now it works this time for me. Okay, so now if I just come here, is it connect? Right, so it is connected. Let's see if it is open up the database this time. Hopefully, I'm just hoping looks like my system. I'll have to just also get a reboot. <laughs> I don't know. So let's see that July 18 I've created, but I do not see that. You see that? That database is not even created. So I'll come over here. And I will, first of all, for example, try to run this command. Okay, it says completed. I'll refresh that and look into databases if that is being created, like the database is being created. Because statement is completed, it says that again, July 18th, it's, it has just completed in, in some seconds, microseconds, but as it created the database, that is a separate story. We'll just look at that story in the show in shortly if it just comes up. Now, in the same way, if the database uh, let's let's let it do its work. In the same way, if the database is created, I'll just create these two one and I'll just try to execute them. Okay. Also, it says that member delivery. Oh, I'm just using the wrong definite uh, wrong spelling. Yeah, July 18 is there. So member and again. I'm using the wrong spelling of member at certain places. Okay. Now, if I just run that one. Okay, members was already there, of course, you know, it has just, you know, created that one. So these two might have now created. Okay. So again, so it might have all that database. So if I come over here, if I just run this. In the tables. Uh, it's just ringing up the table, so fully it brings up. It's very irritating at times because you know my my visual uh, like my SQL Server Management Studio is is weird at times. So I let me know when your installation is complete. I, I I feel that I need to give it uh, I need to give it a re reboot of my machine. I'm just giving a reboot to my machine. Please be here, Sagar, and I hope everyone else will be here. So I need I looks like I need a little bit of rebooting of my machine because it's it's creating oh, oh tables are here. Sorry, no tables are here. So committees and members are here and the committee assignment is not there. So I'll just come here and execute that one. Uh, invalid table committee, the committee. Okay, okay. So we have committees. Da, 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 da. Right now, well, hopefully it should be done. Okay, it says that incorrect syntax near keyword not. Um, well, references, spelling is correct, committees, committee ID, hopefully now it has to have a correct thing. Yeah, so it's completed now. And now if I just refresh the my tables, uh, 
All right, so now if I have got all the three tables over being oversight. So now here, what we are talking about is that, you know, the first command, as I, as I asked us this question, and some people tried answering that one, that batches actually are represented as like, you know, when we know that if the go comes, uh, it's it's typically says that one of the batch is over. So, um, you know, the first batch over here, if you look at that, this first batch actually creates the database July 18 that you are trying to create. And then you can say that these are the second batch of uh, our uh, like, you know, statements or second part of a second batch of our script, because this does what it actually creates table. And, you know, the create table will never work unless the debit table, uh, unless the database has been created. So, of course, you know, because table has to be created on the database and that has to be selected as well. So. You will be basically, you know, that's that's something that we want to that we want to do. So now one more example from our AP uh, database as well. We can just have a look at that one. But before that, let's come back over here. So we're talking about temporary table table, uh, you know, a temporary table example, select top one student mm -hmm. number into student from payment and select static from the student. And we can just, you know, do that one. So now if else, this is very important. Flow if else branches flow based on condition case and flow based on condition. Again, that is, uh, you know, that is, you know, case and switch case type of thing and it's end. Begin and end defines a statement block. While repeats a statement or you know it repeats a statement while a specific condition is true. Defines beginning of a loop, but it repeats the statements unless that little uh, like you know some statement is true. Break it will just you know uh, uh, you know it will exit the innermost uh, innermost while loop or it will just exit the loop right. Continue continue does what returns the to the beginning of the loop. So continue will always take you to the beginning of the try catch is basically what controls the flow of exception handling, you know, the flow of execution of an error or execution handling. It it just, you know, basically handles that one. So there's an if else example, works similar to the same statement, the procedure. So, you know, if it, you, we can we can have a if else example over here, let's come back over here. And again, you know, we can use different databases. So I'm taking now if else example. And for that, I'm using AP. Remember, we have got a, a, an AP database as well. So let's do that. De declare, declare at total view as money. We have defined a variable. Set this total view is equal to. Now here comes the query. Select sum invoice total minus payment sorry minus payment total minus credit total right and from where from invoices right and now if total due is greater than 0 if it is coming out as greater than zero, do what? Print total invoices due equal to. Now here we will do some string interpolation type. We'll put, put a first of all a dollar sign plus we'll say convert varchar, convert into varchar at total due. By, by providing it one. So now if you just come here and I'll say else, and if I say print invoices paid in full. So someone has paid the invoices in full. Make sense? It will just, you know, run that one. So let's, let's run this one now because it will select the database as well. And total invoices due is thirty-two thousand and twenty dollars, and it just you know say total invoices due dollar thirty-two thousand for it, and it converts that into the variable character length, and it just says that. So these statements are used within the SQL statements to add functionality to similar to provide by procedure. So it looks like a procedure, you know, you know, it it looks like a function that is basically doing that like that. So even though these statements mostly are the part of uh, like a SQL statement or the, but they, they look like 
they actually you know look like uh, uh, the the procedural programming language and you know that that is that is what that that worked with right and then as we talked about the table table variables as well we'll just see one example of table variables as well so i'll i'll just you know create that one so let me just look at the one of the example for table variables so what table variables do as i was showing you in the in the example over here that this was the table variable so temporary table variables or table variables are declared in the same manner as the local table variables but what they do so actually you know the uh, like you know uh, table variable is a variable that can store the contents of entire table it can just store entire table into that one to create this type of variable what we do we specify the table data type and the declare statement as we have done over here declare the name of the table and the table data type and then we do what we can just define what and and it's it's the name of or something and that is the columns that we want to define it will create one column for that f1 it'll be the name of f1 and it would be of integer type make sense everyone so now let's see this table table example or table database script that we want to just run over here so now let's come back over here table variables which will help which will be able to hold the tables so use ap again i want to use the ap uh, like the database so look at that declare big vendors table now vendor id that should be in vendor name one variable character of 50 length we want to give that right and now insert at big vendors so again we have created that table and i want to insert some data into that one big vendors what i want to insert select big vendors uh sorry not big vendors sorry select vendor id and vendor name from vendors like i'll take out from the table vendors and now here from where where vendor id in now here comes a sort of you know the 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 sub query or the query here select vendor id from invoices where invoices to invoice total sorry invoice total is greater than 5000 right and then select everything from big vendor so do you see that now it's a table that is that will just bring up bring up this one so now use ap is of course you know we are just you know talking about that one so let's do that and let's create that and run that one let's see how much time it will take Sagar, are you done with your updates and everything? It should be ready now. Uh, which DB was removed? I think July 18 was not even created, you know. Oh, SIS was removed, you say. Okay, maybe. I don't know. Okay, so it looks like I'll have to just, you know, run maybe in that, you know, we'll just run that separately, first of all, and then. Yes, look at that. This is the, this is the result. Even though it's taking a bit of long time, but it's just coming up over here. See that 72 vendor ID, data, repro uh, data reproduction corporations, 99, this name with any other one, 104 and 110. So they are just coming up and they are actually, this, uh, this is a complete table that we created with vendor ID and vendor name and insert at big vendors. We have just inserted select vendor ID, vendor name from vendors where vendor ID select 
vendor ID from invoices where it was. So it's just take out the invoices total data of 5,000 and then it just stores them in that database. So new table is created. And we can just do that, you know, uh, we can we can just create that and we can work on that one. But we'll talk about some of the other scripts. Uh, let's let's take a let's take a break of 15 minutes and then we'll be back with some stuff, fun stuff. And this is right now our third example or fourth example that we have just used over here, right? So what I'll do is that first before going to break, I'll just save this one because it's a temporary file right now. It, it was just stored from there. Save as. I'll just take it to my same files where I'm storing them. And this to be week 11 part one. And again, I'll just share it with you, but I just saved that in case it in, get, in case I lost it. All right, so it's 203 in my system, so we'll be back around 220. Break till then. And I how I hope to see you then.